I'm going to release this word, and, and I just feel this so heavy and so strong this morning for you. I'm going to read to you what I heard the Holy Spirit speaking to me, and then I'm going to go into the message. Are you ready? Say, I'm up. I'm ready. My ears are open. He said to me, there has been a demonic weight. Heaviness has tried to drape the body of Christ. He showed it to me like a mantle. See, God has mantles, but the enemy also puts mantles on people. And he said, heaviness, a spirit of heaviness has tried to drape the body of Christ the last few months. There has been much warfare and threats from the enemy on every side. Am I in the right place this morning? The spirit of weariness has attempted to overwhelm many in this hour, even to the point of hopelessness, even against my strongest warriors, God said. The front line has been assaulted and it has flowed throughout the body. But today I proclaim the spirit of fear, weariness, heaviness, hopelessness is broken. No more. I want to say that again. He says, no more. The church has the power. The tables are turning. The herded, the hurt, the hunted are becoming the hunters. The prey is becoming the predator. It's a new day. The hour is here. My bride is arising with resurrection life. You hold the keys to freedom. The keys of authority are in your hand. You no longer have to be tied to the entrapment of the enemy. You are free. I'm going to say that again by the Spirit of the Lord. You are free. You are not bound, but we declare freedom this morning. I heard him say unto you, I led you by the way of the wilderness. Ooh, this is, gives me chills, makes me want to run right now. I led you by the way of the wilderness. I knew there would be a Red Sea in front of you and Pharaoh's army coming from behind. I set you up against the wall of impossibility. Now all will see who fights for you and who your deliverer is. Watch what I will do. The sea of impossibility will part before you. You will cross over into the miraculous. You are standing at the threshold of living out what the saints of old only could dream about. This is your time to display my power. Will you answer the call? Will you say yes I'm all in. I'm not going back to Egypt. Will you be the curse breaker for your family, for this city, for this region, and for a generation? He says to you, awake. There is no time to waste. Awake. 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 Last week, the Holy Spirit, uh, I preached one of the probably most uh, uh, sobering, weighty words I believe that I've ever preached because the Lord showed me the spirit of Delilah that has been coming against the people of God when it says that she made Samson sleep upon her knees that has been the goal of the enemy to cause the church to go to sleep that's why he's been lullabying the sleep uh, the church to sleep with fear he's been lullabying the church to give up hope come on am I talking to somebody he's been lullabying saying it's too impossible don't you see you're standing at the Red Sea don't you hear Pharaoh's army the bondage coming to get you what are you going to do see today's your day today's your day the, the, the Israelites that was their day today is your day right now 2021 it's your day to show forth the power of God it's your time this is your hour now, I want you to turn with me. Let's go to Exodus chapter 13. Hallelujah. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures here, but then we're going to where God had me speak. The title of my message this, me uh, this morning is a meeting at the gates. A meeting at the gates. Get ready. Today, there's a meeting. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. You'll get it in just a minute. But there's a meeting at the gates. 
Exodus chapter 13 verse 18 says this, but God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. See, in my Bible, I have that triple underline, but God, but God did it. Some of you are saying my failure did it. Some of you are saying my disobedience did it. Some of you are saying my situation, oh, no, no, no. God said, but God led you by the way of the Red Sea. He set you up to get to the Red Sea of impossibility. See, you think it Am I talking to anybody? I want you to know you standing. I see the spirit of the Lord is saying to you, you're standing at a threshold. You can choose to cross over into the miraculous, the impossible, the, 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 the delivering power of God, or you can go back to bondage. Oh, I'm going back with you, Pharaoh. Take me. I know you're an evil taskmaster. I know you're a, a, a slave driver. I know that I was in bondage there and you were beating me there and I was so abused and I was trapped in sin and I was trapped in bondage. And, uh, but God, I, I can't stand looking at this Red Sea, so just take me back. You have a decision this morning. He said, you can go back to bondage or you can cross the threshold into the impossible. I don't know about you, but I'm going. I'm all in. I'm going. I'm going. I, I, I'm determined. I can't stay back any longer. I can't go back. There's nothing to go back to. And so it says that he led them by the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. Didn't you, don't you wish sometimes you didn't have to go through the wilderness? Y'all are looking super spiritual. No, I, I like it. Praise God. I don't. Y'all judge me if you must, but I, I, I would rather not have to face the Red Sea. I, I would love to just skip through uh, and smell the roses and, and tiptoe through the tulips and, oh, queso rosa, everything is great. This is wonderful. No, it's more like warfare going on. There's, there, there's bombs going off here, and, and I feel like I'm dodging bullets here and do dodging this there. I guess I'm the only one, but I know who I've come for this morning. So, uh, uh, but he said, he led the people, by the way. Now, Exodus chapter 14, verse, I'm going to read a couple of verses here. Let's look at verse 13. And it says this. Now, we know what happens. And Moses said unto the people, fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew you to this day. He's saying to you this morning, fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I want you to know there has been a spirit of fear that has been released against the body of Christ. Afraid to talk up, afraid to speak up. There's been a cowering spirit that has come against the body. And I want you to know it's time for the spirit of boldness to come upon the body. Fear not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will shew you to this day. For the Egyptians whom you have seen today, you will see them again no more forever. I'll hear this today. The Egyptians, the bondage, the taskmasters that you have seen, you will see them again no more today in Jesus' name. He says, the Lord shall fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ thou unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. He sent me this morning to tell you, you can't go back to bondage. You can't go back to the old thing. You can't go back to church as usual. You can't go back to religion. You can't go back. We must go forward. It's time to go forward. God is calling you forward. He's saying to you this morning, I know that some of you right now, my grandmother used to say, I'm trapped between the devil and the deep blue sea. That's the saying about the Red Sea. I'm trapped between a rock and a hard place. I'm trapped between the devil and the deep blue sea. He said the blue sea or the Red Sea's in front of me and the devil, Pharaoh's coming up from behind. I don't know what I'm going to do. Some of you are at that place right now. I know it by the Spirit. But he says, hold on. You're going to see the salvation of the Lord. Now I want you to turn in your Bibles. Let's go to Luke 
the seventh chapter. Some of you thought, said, I thought that was the message. That's the intro. <laughs> Luke chapter 7, we're going to read a few verses here. I was praying yesterday and actually had uh, something else I was thinking I was going to preach on. And I was praying and this is the area I like to pray, right here. And I was praying yesterday afternoon. I was here all morning and afternoon and I was just seeking the Lord. And I heard him speak this text to me. And I really didn't know what he was speaking. I didn't know it was going to be for this morning. I thought it was just he was speaking to me to read this text. And then last night, about 11 or so o'clock, he began to tie it together. And then he began to speak to me about the Red Sea. And and so I began to type out those words for you this morning. But uh, now I know exactly what he was referring to. So let's go to uh, Luke chapter 7. We're going to start reading with, with verse 11. And it says this, and it came to pass the day after that he went into a city called Nain. And many of his disciples went with him and much people. Now, when he came nigh to the gate, somebody say gate. Gate. When he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out. The only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city were with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, weep not. And he came and he touched the bier. And they that bear him stood still. And he said, young man, I say unto thee, arise. And he that was dead. You know what gets me? Is that some people are really say, well, he wasn't really dead. No. The word clearly tells us he was dead. He was being carried out of the city. Come on, somebody. And he was dead. He that was dead sat up and began to speak. And he delivered him to his mother. And there came a great fear on all. And they glorified God saying that a great prophet has risen among us. And that God hath visited his people. Get ready because God has come to visit you this morning. I said God has come to interrupt your life this morning. He is here to visit you. Will you accept the visitor. Now, I was reading this text and I was thinking, Lord, what does this have to do with the words you're speaking to me about the Red Sea and the impossible? I don't, I don't get the correlation here. You're going to have to open my eyes. See, sometimes I would love to have uh, hearing the voice of God for dummies. You know, you've seen those books. I would love to have one of those bright yellow books that says, okay, God's saying this right now. But sometimes we just have to pursue him till he clears it up, right? And so when I was reading this text, he stood, the the, the words stood out to me that he was coming. Now, he had just performed a a miracle where he heals the centurion's servant. The boy, he speaks a word only. He doesn't come to the house, but he releases a word and he's made whole. Are you with me? So they saw this great power of demonstration of healing. And so the word tells us that he's entering in to the gate of the city Nain. Now that word gate began to stand out to me because he said that the gates are very important in cities. Gates are entryways and exit ways. See, some of us, we've got to guard our gates. We have eye gates. We have ear gates. We allow too much stuff. The reason that some of you can't sleep at night because we've allowed torment to come in. 
<laughs> Some of you are dealing with, with lust issues. It's because you won't turn off the television. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to deal with it this morning, all right? We've got to turn off some things. You, you're watching those things that makes your mind begin to go places. No, you've got to turn it off in the spirit this morning. The gates are entryways. See, God says we've got to guard our gates. The problem in some churches, in the church at large, is we have allowed the entryway into the gates and we haven't shut the gates saying no devil God has given us dominion God has given us authority God has given us the keys to the kingdom of heaven I refuse to allow you to rule our city I refuse to allow you to rule my family I refuse to allow generational curses over my kids, over my family, over my finances, over my mind, over my body. I don't care. I refuse it. If it's not lining up to his word, I'm a generational curse breaker. It stops with me in Jesus' name. And he comes. Now, I want you to picture this. Because he's coming after this great miracle of the centurion. And then he comes and he's entering the gate of Nain. And as he comes, he has a great amount of people that are following him. And as he's coming to the gate, there's a great amount of people with the funeral procession. So these two worlds collide. Oh, that's what's happening this morning. Two worlds are colliding. See, as I know the enemy told you it was over. The enemy said that you're going to die in your bondage. The enemy said you're never. I know the liar. He's a liar. He is a liar. I've come to tell you there's a collision that's happening in the spirit this morning. And there's a meeting at the gates. And guess who wins? I've already read the back of the book. And I know who wins. And the great amount of people are with Jesus. The funeral procession, a great amount of people. And it's almost like, I, I see it as two gangs coming together. Death and life. Darkness and light. Woo. I see them coming to the entryway. This was a battle for the city. This was not only a battle for the woman and her son. It was a battle of dark and light. See, you think that it just has to do with you and your family, but you don't understand. You're called to reach a generation. You're called to reach all those in your family. You're called to reach your children and their spouses and your children's children. It's more than just you and what you see. Ram Church Chattanooga, what we are here for is more than what we see this morning. We are here to guard the gates. We are here to be watchmen on the wall. We are here to say no more. We've come for a showdown. Darkness and light. Death and life. The greater one is inside of us. Are you hearing me? And so Jesus enters the gate the city of Nain. And it says that he sees this woman and he has compassion on her. Now, it's important to understand when you study out the word compassion, it actually translates from the Greek, meaning that he was so moved, his intestines even moved. That's some passion or compassion, I should say. He was so moved that even his inner parts were moved. And he saw this woman, her only son. And the word says, see, I love Jesus. He didn't wait. He didn't wait for the funeral to be over and say, okay, I'm going to come. Resur no. He said, I got to interrupt this thing. The resurrection life is coming to visit. See, I love this that happened at the gates because the word tells us in Matthew chapter 16, they told Peter, he said, Peter, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Are you with me right now? The gates of hell. Why did he say gates? Because gates are the strategic place where business happens. 
if you study out in biblical times, they would meet at the gates for exchanging goods, exchanging funds, so they would do business at the gate of a city. The enemy comes to the gate and devises schemes, plots, plans against your life. See, we know God has a plan for our life, but the enemy does too. That's why he tried to trip you up from the time you were born till now. He's tried to keep you in bondage. So there's been meeting places. The gates of hell have come against you. But God says they shall not prevail against the church. Now the word, Greek word for church there is the word ecclesia. And I love this. Get this, get this, get this. That word means legislative assembly. See, you didn't understand. You thought you were coming to a, a gospel meeting tonight. You thought you were coming to hear uh, this morning. You were coming to hear the word of God, and you were. But we came as a legislative assembly for the gate of this city and this region, and really for a generation to say, uh-uh, we're not going to allow the enemy any longer to run rampant in our region. No longer are we going to just say, take our youth, take our kids, take our finances, take a no devil. You are are a liar. We are the church. We are the legislative assembly. What we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. We have the power of binding and loosing. We have access to the name of Jesus. He said, ask anything in my name and I will give it to you. See, we're a legislative assembly. See, I know the church has been disregarded. You're not relevant today a lot. Uh, you're teaching about holiness. We don't want to hear all that. That's not popular. It's just, just be quiet over in your little corner. But I want you to know the real bride of Christ is rising up. There is an army that is rising up saying, no, no, you don't understand. We legislate what happens on the earth. You don't understand. Jesus came so that we can walk in dominion and authority and that whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven and whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven see when we really get revelation of who we the church we are the bride we are the apple of God's eye we're the legislative assembly Congress doesn't make the laws we make the laws and I'm telling you, church, we've dropped the ball, but we're picking it up. Now's the time for us to begin to run. Now's the time for us to have a meeting at the gates. Now it's the time for darkness to be confronted by the light of the world and say, listen here, we are the legislative assembly of God. We are the bride, whatever we bind on earth. So that means, mama, you need to go and start taking authority over that demonic force that's attacked your children. You need to be the breaker of generational curses and say, uh-uh, it's not coming in my household. Last night I went in, in my daughter's room and I began praying. And I said, uh, uh, we had a little moment there yesterday. And I said, listen. And this is how bold I was. I actually heard her mom had a little moment. And so I'd jump up from studying, being in the Holy Ghost, and I was already in authority. I said, listen here. We're not going to have that. You're 10, almost 10. And I said, I'm sure not going to deal with this when you're 16. You hear me? And she was like, yes, daddy. I said, the Bible says... Rebellion is the sin as a, the sin of witchcraft. And I said, I will not have any devils in my house. I will not have any witchcraft. You say, well, that's a little strong for a 10-year-old. I, I, I know generational curse. I know there's a real death. I don't have time to play. I, I've seen too many kids, preacher's kids, that have been snubbed by the enemy and, and, and brought in by the enemy because the devil wants to hurt the man or woman of God. Uh-uh, he ain't going to have my kids. No, no, no. He, he will not. If I have to get in there and pray every day, all day, all night, I don't care. That's not going to happen. You said you're overreacting for just a little smart attitude. Yeah, 
But I start now, and I'm going to defeat it now. I begin to say, guess what? Generational curses break in my home. See, you, you got to get bold. We got to get bold. See, too many of us have been uh, putting up with too much. Yeah, we're the legislative assembly. When I read that, I, I'm telling you, I say this a lot. I about took off running, Agnes, because I read that and I said, I'm legislating what happens in my house. I'm legislating what happens in my generation in Jesus' name. No, no, no. I'm not just going to pull the covers over my head and say, well, it's just, everything's just going down here. It's hopeless. No. I've still got breath. I can still legislate what God has called me to legislate. See, we got to take this thing seriously. Jesus comes to the gate where the gates of hell, the gates of death, and remember what he said to Mary and Martha. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet. Some of you are moving into a yet moment. I know it's looked like death. I know it looked like generational curses. I know it looked like the enemy was against you. I know it looked... I'm going to preach this house down this morning if you don't help me right now. But I know that the enemy told you it's looked one way. But I've come to tell you by the spirit of God, you are moving into a yet moment. You're, there's a class at the gate of your life. There's a clashing going on. There's a meeting going on where darkness, death destruction is meeting resurrection life and I want to tell you that death is no match for life darkness is no match for light the enemy is no match for your God I don't care if you're at the Red Sea and it looks impossible we serve a God that still parts Red Seas we serve a God that still resurrects dead things it's not over God say my, my legislative assembly in Chattanooga today is rising up. Oh, yeah. The, the word says that heaven is awaiting the revealing of his sons and daughters. They're waiting. They're anticipating. When are, when are they going to be unveiled? When are they going to rise up? And see, the enemy had you so bogged down that many of us have been laid down flat and we've been covered up with all the junk and cares of the world and things that the enemy put on us that God, all oh, of heaven still, I love the version of the Passion that says they're standing on their tiptoes waiting for the sons and daughters of God to be unveiled and, and all of heaven's waiting and we've been so bogged down with all the cares of the world but he sent me on assignment this morning to tell somebody it's your day to get up from everything you've been bogged down to. It's your day for resurrection life. There is a meeting taking place this morning at the gate. And he says... He says to you today, hear the word of the Lord. He says, it's time for you to be unveiled. It's time for you to be unveiled, sons and daughters of God. It's time for you to rise up in this hour. It's time for you to be the legislative assembly. See, we're not just here in Chattanooga because we're meeting in a church. We're not here because it, it feels good. I will stop pastoring if we go through the rituals and routine of another servant. I didn't come to be an actor or a puppet or be a religious uh, zealot. No, I came because I'm filled with fire and I've come to the gate of this city and the gate of this generation and say no more. We legislate what happens. We are the church. We are the bride. And we have power and authority. He says, I've given you, hear me, the keys to the kingdom of heaven. I've given you keys represent what? Authority. When you have a key, you can unlock things. 
I have a key that opens every door in this building. That means I have a right to walk into any room in this building. I have a key of authority that opens the front door. We have a key that opens the door to heaven, to earth. We've been praying, God, we want a portal, open heaven. God, give us, let us, let the heavens open up. I love that song that they sing. Let the heavens open up and the spirit come. I wasn't going to sing. I know. Let the spirit come down. I, I, I know the words, but I, I know you do too. So I was just going to, my voice is a little sore. So I was going to save you all the, the torture of hearing the rasp this morning. But, uh, uh. That's our heart's cry. And see, it's not something that we just have to say, God, open up the portal of heaven. Pour out the blessing. Open up the windows of heaven. He said, I will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you don't have room enough to receive. That's a promise in the word. But he says to us, I've given you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So if I came on this front porch like I did this morning, and I just stood looking at the door, saying, God, open the door. I need to go inside, God. God, open the door. I'm not saying God couldn't zap it open. He could if he wanted. But he's also given me keys that I can take and turn the lock and open the door. That's what he's done in the spirit. He's given us keys as believers. We have a key of authority. That Linda, when we go lay hands on the sick, I'm tired of praying little wimpy prayers. God, touch them in Jesus' name. And yes, we mean it sympathetic. I'm not making light of that. But he's commanded us to heal the sick. Notice he didn't say pray for the sick. He said to heal the sick. You said, well, I haven't healed the sick yet. Keep praying. Keep praying. Keep standing. I remember one time I went to go pray for, for a particular person. And, and I had prayed for them, prayed for them, prayed for them some more. It was like every altar call, every time I opened up the altar, they were coming for prayer for the same need. And I prayed, kept praying zealously every time. And I was getting frustrated. And I thought, Lord, why aren't they receiving it? And he said, you keep praying until I give it. But you pray like it's already done. I've given you the key. See, we've got to understand. We, this morning, for nothing else, if you just get the revelation of who you are this morning, do you understand the spirit of the living God? The same spirit of resurrection that raised Christ from the dead now lives in my prayer room one day I was praying and, and he spoke that now I've heard that since I was a child I've grew up in church I, my parents were pastors I grew up in church I know that scripture verse but one day I got revelation of you know when your eyes are open and it's like whoa and I on my prayer wall I wrote I have resurrection in me I am a temple of the Holy Spirit, just like Jesus was. You're saying, you're, you're getting awful bold saying you're just like Jesus. No, it's not. My flesh is nothing. But I'm telling you, the spirit that's inside of me is the spirit of the living God. The spirit that's inside of you is the spirit of the living God. That's why you can walk to a city called Nain and you can say, okay, I'm facing the spirit of death. I'm facing the hell, the plan of the enemy. The gates have been shut out against me, but I carry the key and I can unlock gates. I can open doors. I can legislate this in my family, I just keep hearing the Spirit of the Lord saying that, listen, you have been given authority in your family. Now, I want you to do something. I want you, when you leave this place, I want you to go home and you start taking that authority. Instead of laying on your face saying, oh, Jesus, please, please, please touch my, my child, touch my, my daughter, waking up, whatever it is. 
He says, I want you to walk in the authority of heaven and say, God, I thank you that I carried the key to the breaking this generational curse over my family. I thank you that I carry the key of authority. And whatever I bind on earth is bound in heaven. That generational curse is broken. And I release generational blessings in the name of Jesus. It's time. It's time. There's a showdown at the gates. Death is meeting life. Darkness is meeting light. <laughs> oh, I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, this is the Red Sea moment. I led you this way. When you understand that God has the best things for you, you understand God led me this way. Why, God? Why did you leave me? Because he said, I want to show everyone who's fighting for you. I want to show you who your God is. I'm not just the God that can bring you out of Egypt, but I'm the God who will bring you out of Egypt with the blessings of Egypt, and then I'll bring you to the place of impossibility where bondage is trying to chase you down. But he said, then you will lift up your hands, Moses, and the waters will begin to part. And some of you today, you're crossing over. I kept hearing the Lord say threshold and crossing over into the miraculous. He said, you're going to cross over into the miraculous realm to the realm of impossibility you're going to begin to see things that 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 look the opposite began to turn you're going to see miracles in them i'm prophesying right now to somebody you're going to see miracles in the most unexpected places unexpected opportunities unexpected open doors unexpected breakthrough you didn't see it coming you didn't even ask god for it it just appeared god led you by the way of the wilderness of the red sea he said because i was going to show forth that i still part waters i still take care of my children i still break off my I don't care what Pharaoh is chasing you down. It does not matter. God's saying, I am greater than all of these. There is a meeting taking place right now at the gates. The enemy is warring, saying, no, no, no. This is death. This is death. It's mine. Jesus said, uh, before you celebrate too much, you thought I was dead and you celebrated. But remember, on the third day, I came back. That's my child. And guess what? They're getting up. Guess what? That boy is sitting up and then he's going to begin to speak. I believe he began to testify of the goodness of God. It doesn't say what he said, but I believe he came out with a preaching anointing and began to declare the glory of God. Why? Because he was dead. He had a dead experience. And then he came back to life. When he, I believe he began to preach the gospel. You know what God wanted to do? He wanted to demonstrate his power. And I tell you today, those of you watching online, those of you in this room, God is demonstrating his power to you in your life. Some of you are saying, well, pastor, I, I messed it up. That's why I'm at the Red Sea. You may have messed it up, but guess what? God makes crooked places straight. God has already gone before you. And he says, I led you by the way of the Red Sea. Sometimes it would have been quicker to go by the way of the Philistines. But he knew that the people couldn't handle that. So he said, I led them a long way by the way of the wilderness to the Red Sea. And he said, but now you're going to see the water's pot part. He said, now you're going to understand that you are the legislative assembly. I, I, I just I keep hearing that. That we are called to legislate. What we see in this service today, God is saying, Begin to legislate. That's what we were doing in prayer before service this morning. We were binding up every weapon of the enemy, every attack that would come to steal, kill, and destroy. We began to say, God, I thank you that people see with clear vision. They hear with spirit ears. That's what we were doing. We were preparing the gates, the entryway for God. Now notice what they said. 
after the boy stood up and began, or, or sat up and began speaking, it says that they begin to say that God hath visited his people. I believe it's because of the message that the boy began to preach and the demonstration that they saw with their own eyes. I'm telling you this morning, your life is about to testify of the goodness and the faithfulness and the power of God. Your life is going to be a testimony. We are at this Red Sea of impossibility. But I'm telling you today, I heard him, I heard him say to me, tell the people, there's a meeting at the gates today. Oh. And there is resurrection life. Dead things are coming to life. Curses are being broken. And you are called to legislate for this city, for your family, for a generation in Jesus' name.